We are grateful to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before Ramadan Allah has given me the ability and the tawfiq that I in front of you pious brethren colleagues for some time am able to sit down and discuss with you with Allah's fadl, Allah's grace, Allah's blessings, these rewards come. Every moment Allah Ta'ala's mercy rains down. Us people, and we waste those great mercies and opportunities. No moment, no hour, no minute is there which is not attached to Allah's mercy, Allah's rahmah. In Sam, the human being, he loses out through one thing in this dunya and that is negligence and laziness and ignorance. Ignorance and negligence is a big disease attached to a human being that makes a person not benefit. It doesn't leave the human being. Eventually the time comes in that person's life for him to depart this world and then at that time nothing remains. Nothing can be done. It's not the case that that we don't have yaqeen on this point, that we don't believe this point, or we don't understand this point. We have certainty on this point, solid. Every day we see that, people departing this world, we see that. Those who don't even have yaqeen, certainty, they leave the world, they leave this dunya. After some time I've come here to Manchester, and in the way I was looking at the places, Localities, I spent a quite a long time in this city. So it was a unique feeling and emotion. How many colleagues of ours have left, have departed, have gone? They used to wander around with me in this town, in this city, but they're not here today. These are the signs of Allah. But the reason is just one. Negligence, ghaflat laziness and to get rid of this laziness and negligence Allah Ta'ala has given us ibadat ibadat worship actions they are rewards from Allah they're not burden for us they are rewards they are what are, what are ibadat if you see that five times salah has given us the ability to implement the five times salah. Five times if an individual becomes regular in salah, then most definitely that human being will start to detach himself from negligence and ignorance. Five times presence in Allah's court, Allah has given it to us for this reason, so that the human being comes out of negligence and ignorance. One salah he'll go to, then the next salah he'll go to, then the third salah he'll go to. So it makes a system of life for him, a cycle. And we think it's a punishment, Salah. Or we say it's too difficult to pray Salah. In reality, this is the preparation for the hereafter that Allah is telling us. In reality, it's preparation. 
all ibadat, worship actions Allah Ta'ala has bestowed to us, granted to us, gifted to us, but the insan, so that he wakes up from negligence and he prepares for the hereafter. From Allah, when Allah calls the human being, then death doesn't look at he's 15 years old, he's 10 years old, he's 20 years old, he's 25 years old. Yes, there's no age principle. Whenever Allah wants, he can call the human being back. Every moment, stay prepared. Every moment, stay prepared as a human being. Why? Why? Because that place to come where we're going to go, that is permanent, forever, ongoing, everlasting. There, there will be no change. That will be forevermore, constant. Just once the person's evaporated from here, that's the end of story. End of story. Then there forever the place that Allah Ta'ala has destined us to, that whatever we've done with our hands in this dunya, then in the hereafter Allah will give to us in return. Allah says, I will not do zulm on anybody, not an atom's weight or particle. If you bring a good deed, you will get the reward for it. There's no oppression for anybody, no injustice, Allah says. So we can't even do one hair's width of a good deed. We're scared of that. There's no value to an atom's weight of a good deed. If you... How many chances Allah gives to us to the mu'mineen for the hereafter preparation? That just you, to a Muslim brother or colleague, just smile and meet that person. Allah Ta'ala will bestow you with a good deed. Grant you a good deed, but we can't even do that. Every, every footstep, Iman, people of Iman, Allah has opened the doors for preparation. For preparation. And the biggest door, the biggest door is akhlaq, conduct. Yes, you don't have to spend money for that, no taka spend on that, no prayer mat, no wudu, no ablution, nothing. For the worship of akhlaq, good manners and good character. Remember this, Jannah, most people who are going to Jannah won't be the worshippers, rather those who had good character and good conduct. Those people who are going to paradise, they will be called from all door, from all doors of paradise. Such people, they will be that the, oh, he's sinful, oh, look at him, he was a sinner in the world. But you will see them entering into paradise. People will be surprised, shocked, what's going on him? But the person came to him, and he was in desperate need at that time. So he said, okay, fine, I'll assist you, I'll help you. So, did our Habib Sallallahu say, that you help him today, tomorrow, on the day of judgment? Allah says, I will help you. I will help you. And we think he's senna, he's a waster, or he's a useless. We give him titles. But akhlaq, the conduct of a human being, human being, is the biggest thing. Akhlaq, if you improve it, pull yourself together, consider you have achieved. Deen's biggest and most important factor and part of the deen is the akhlaq of the human being. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he announced that I didn't come here to teach you anything. I was sent to this dunya for which purpose? So that I can complete your conduct and manners and akhlaq. So we should have feelings for others, affection for others, love for others, brotherly relations, meeting and greeting, and learn how to forgive our brethren. How to help out in their time of need. If someone does dhulam, then to persevere and to bear it. And instead of punishing, to announce forgiveness. This is deen. This is deen. This is the real deen of ours. Such a person, all night, morning, keeps a fast and in the evening, she does ibadah, worship. So in comparison to that woman, so the first is a woman who worships fast, and in comparison to a woman who had good akhlaq, the Prophet said, she is the jannati, the second one. Who, the, the one who does ibadah the worship, but not good conduct, she's going towards hell. Look at the difference. This is the deen we need to create within us. Alhamdulillah. The full ibadah is coming to your life. This is the real deen. The, where will this deen come from then? What's the path to achieve this deen? This is the research we need to carry out now. How do we acquire this deen? What's the path? Because if we acquire that deen, alhamdulillah, it's a good thing. Worshipping, praying, fasting, ibadah, worship. And you get that from the masajid, ulayma, the scholars, they tell us things. But, but, all, despite all of this, if you keep on frowning when you go home and the people in your home are not happy, then tell me that where's your ibadah going to go to? 
Where's your worship going to go to? So, best of all husband is he, the Holy Prophet said, the best husband is he, that when he goes home, then he smiles and laughs and enters into the house. And the best wife is she, that when the husband comes from outside, then she smiles at him. She's smiling. Where will this deen come from? We don't have this deen. There's destruction in our homes then, isn't it? This deen is not present. In reality, the truth of the matter is that the ibadah that we've been given to, the external physical worship are to look after our clock so that the deen can come into us. So to acquire this deen, we don't try. This is the biggest defect. Yes, we don't give importance to this. In fact, we don't have no importance in our deen. Rather, rather ibadah is one part and the other 90% are all based on akhlaqiyat, conduct. So what, which factors should we emphasize more on? On this part of the deen, isn't it? the nine-tenths. So where will this deen come from? For this what shall we do? Allah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated in a hadith that the human being in his body there's a piece of flesh. There's a piece of flesh in a body of a human being. If that is corrected, then his whole deen will come into that person. The whole deen comes, the deen of akhlaq will come into that person. And as that piece of flesh remains dirty and pure, then the real deen won't come. So to acquire that deen, if we want to, which is the real deen, which will deliver us to paradise, Allah will be happy. Allah's mahabub will be happy. For that deen to acquire it, what have we been given to do? We need to correct our heart. We need to reform our heart. If the heart is improved, then consider, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, then success is there. Success is there. Best, best human being you will become. That human being that Allah will like, will be pleased with. But we don't look at the heart, we don't look towards the heart, we don't correct the heart, we don't improve the heart. So how do we improve the heart? Allah Ta'ala has told us this as well. He's, he's explained it. So will we correct our hearts? Why? Because Ramadan is coming now. And Alhamdulillah, we are gathered here, assembled here. So I'm very fortunate I'm sat amongst you pious people. So why don't we talk about those things that Ramadan is coming so we get a good Ramadan? Isn't it? Allah's Nabi Sallallahu gave us a big guarantee about Ramadan. That whoever has during Ramadan spent the time with salamat in good way, in good way. Allah's Nabi some said, then I give the guarantee the rest of the year will pass in a good way for that person. The rest of the year, salamat. If the, during that year you die, then it will be the death of salamat. Nice death. Because the Prophet was announced from his bath. So it is very necessary extremely necessary that we pass through Ramadan with salamat in a good way, positively. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. Very simple. Very simple. Okay, so how, what is the tariqah, the method to pass through salam in a peaceful and nice, good way? There's a hadith, so I'll go towards this now. Ramadan, when it comes, okay, Alhamdulillah, we start aman. Worship, deeds, salah becomes good, taraweeh, we start to pray, talawat of Qur'an, recitation of Qur'an, we start. Isn't it? Yeah, and we keep the fast as well. Every man does this, every person does this, so that we are spending Ramadan in a nice way. But with these things, with these actions, the salamat, Ramadan is not attained. The goodness, the well-being of Ramadan is not attained. To pass through salam, uh, Ramadan peacefully, nicely, in an excellent manner, the objective Allah gave us Ramadan for, the purpose that He gave us Ramadan for. If we want to pass through Ramadan in a good way, then what we need to do is do not disobey Allah. First, don't commit the sins. Whoever has refrained from sin during Ramadan, external or internal, bahir or batini, then his Ramadan will be the excellent Ramadan of Salamat, my friends. If he's backbiting as well, and he's doing sins of the eyes, 
and haram is running its course and anger is coming as well and fighting and quarreling as well and lying is continuing as well and wasteful talk is carrying on and in and parallel he's praying taraweeh parallel he's praying salah parallel he's keeping the fast so tell me then this is not ramadan ramadan alhamdulillah we do this every day these actions we do all these actions every day but in ramadan the main of ramadan is suddenly Suddenly the preparation is this. Look, from Rajab al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi announced the do dua, the do dua that we attain Ramadan. Such a month of barakah and blessings that all year long you cannot get a month like this all year long. So many barakah, there's no month full of barakah like this one. So many rewards you don't get in any other month at all. So within this month, focus and work hard on one factor, that do not commit the sins. Do not commit the sins. Full effort and focus on this point, the pivot. Just like from, the, you know, when Shaban, from Shaban we should prepare that everything we are going to control so we can uh, correct and improve our Ramadan. Control the tongue, control your eyesight, control your hands. Um, everything, all the habits through Ramadan, we're going to control 30 days. A person does self control as Nabi Sallallahu gives the guarantee for the rest of the year. So, f- focus and pay attention to this. I'm telling myself this, you are pious people. I need to do this, that I focus and pay attention more on these points. Okay, it's fine, open the Quran, recite Quran, but that won't be the, the Ramadan of goodness and well being, salamat. Peaceful Ramadan, Salamat will be when our Rabb, our Lord is happy with us, pleased with us. And our Rabb is not happy with these actions, second reactions. Rabb says, the things I've told you to refrain from, music and uh, singing and immodest things, bad talk and non-sunnah actions and no amal on the sunnah and not following the tariqah of the Prophet Life, life, change the life before Ramadan, change the life. Make a list. What is it that Allah and His Rasul has disliked? 30 days I want to control that. Just for four weeks. That's it. Just four weeks I'm not going to cut my beard. After that we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens after that. But I'm not going to cut my beard. Doesn't matter people criticize. Oh you've become Mullah now. You are this now. Even if they mock you. Just four weeks I'm going to promise in Ramadan I'm going to create myself. Maybe that the next Ramadan I won't get in my life, maybe. Totally is the truth. It's the fact those who were with us last year in Ramadan, they are not here with us now. They've gone, they've departed the poor souls. They've departed, they've gone. They've left us. Tell me, what a great reward Allah Ta'ala again has given us Ramadan. Otherwise, that Allah Ta'ala could have called us instead of them. So what a great favor, even though we still don't know, there's still one week left now. I can't say in advance that tomorrow maybe we'll pass away. Maybe whilst we're walking we'll pass away. So right now we still do the dua that Allah please enter us into Ramadan. Deliver us up to Ramadan. Remember one thing. That our deen, you know, our deen, our life is not based on amal. It's based on niya intention. Remember this. It's not based on actions. Action is a great thing indeed. Today I don't know about beard. If I say inshallah I'll keep the correct, the full beard. And I'll spend it properly during Ramadan. And then... If I go out and die, complete with forgiveness, he will wake up with the full beard. So one of he made the near, the intention. Yeah, Allah wants to see how oh, it didn't grow or so long. That, oh, I'm not going to do any work with interest, riba. I'm not going to do this during Ramadan. I want to spoil my Ramadan. If I don't get Ramadan next year, I won't get forgiveness. Right now, I'll get the stamp of approval of Jannah, paradise, if I do it now. All previous sins will be forgiven. Oh, a uh, big, big opportunity is coming. He said, I'm not going to do this thing. He makes the near intention. Alhamdulillah. With that near, it's written in your book of records that he's the individual. He will not consume riba interest. The near is what runs the game. Near. So at least minimum these four weeks, the human being, the Samadullah, confine yourself, restrict yourself. That my Rabb, whatever he's dis- unhappy with, unhappy with my lord whatever he's unhappy with then i'm not gonna do that it's a big worship you will be carrying out i say there's no greater ibadah than this in ramadan than what i've just said ramadan there's no greater worship than this in ramadan 
That's why Allah Ta'ala gave Ramadan. La lakum tattakun. Allah says, the whole Ramadan, 30 days I'm given to you for this reason that don't make me unhappy, displeased. Rather do those things that cause my pleasure. The Quran is saying this. That I gave you Ramadan for no other point, no other reason. I'm giving the Ramadan to you, my servants, or human beings, and Allah knows. He knows our conditions. He knows our circumstances, what we've done all of the year that's gone by. We kept on making Allah happy, talking rubbish and waste of time, life. What have we done before Ramadan? No one can claim that I pray Salah, Tahajjud. What niyyah did you pray with? You don't even know why you're doing or not doing. So now we have such a fantastic chance. Consider yourself as a criminal. Present yourself in Allah's court in front of Allah. And do your analysis. And a new lease of life should open up. A new lease should be written. And how does that open? That new door of life. That before Ramadan every man sits and he does Tawbah, he repents. Tawbah. Tawbah. This is the preparation, a fantastic preparation for this month. Yes, what a great action will be that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu wants to save us from Jahannam, hell. And he hasn't given this in secret to us. He hasn't given it in secret that when you get something by secret, maybe you'll miss it out. It's been announced openly from Rajab, Shaban, through Rajab, Shaban. Then the nights, the nights in Rajab were given. And then Shaban, Allah gave us an eye, made us practice. Allah made us practice. What a great status. But then we're just animals. If we don't understand these points, that what is reality? The reality of Ramadan. Ramadan is such that as soon as you enter, we made a niyyah now. Whilst you're entering into Ramadan, the forgiveness is achieved on entering Ramadan. So brothers, do we make the niyyah intention? Today make the niyyah. That Ramadan, I'm not going to waste it. Previous Ramadans, are many of them are wasted. And Ramadan is not this that pray Trawi, Quran, recite Quran. These are secondary bonuses of Ramadan. This is nur ala nur, bonus upon like the icing on the cake, you can say. You can do as much as you want, you get a bonus. But you will not attain and make your Ramadan with these secondary actions. It won't make your Ramadan. Remember this. Not through amal, worship. Allah is happy from what? The things that Allah is happy with, that is the action we need to do. That is the action we need to do. And Allah is happy when? Don't talk about the things that Allah is not happy with. So take a list that I don't know, I don't know anything. Say, that give me a list at least, the, the actions that cause Allah's displeasure. Make that list, acquire the list. They say, fine, the rest I don't know. Can I do it or not? Actions, worship, but these 30 days that Allah, the 30 days, the four weeks that have been given to me by Allah, I make complete near that I'm not going to do these actions that are on that list. That's it. And then you've succeeded. Alhamdulillah, your whole work, you've achieved the success. And salamat, you're not just getting Ramadan. The whole year you're getting. The whole year. The whole year you're getting. The rest of the year you'll wander around like Jannati in the dunya, salamat, goodness, well-being, salamat human beings, salamati man, salamati people. But this is the point. That when upon Allah says something and a person complies and says, Allah, you give me this reward and I'm grateful, shukr that you give me an opportunity. I wasn't uh, deserved of this, that if I die and I get forgiven, but Allah has given me Ramadan and I valued it. Allah says, Shakartum lain shakartum wa la azidannakum. Allah says that you have valued my reward that I've given to you, the gift. You've appreciated my gift. So one year my Habib has announced, but I'll give you a bonus. Then shall I make you a solid Muslim and a believer? Solid, Allah says. That I won't enable you, allow you to do sin after that. From you, the bad actions will not be committed after that. Now, that I won't let you, I won't permit you to go towards sin after that. So brothers, do we make a promise? Inshallah. This is the preparation for Ramadan. This is what we need to see. Whoever stopped frozen, he's frozen. Then there's no knowledge of what's to come. Yes, this equals Ramadan. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That you will not displease me in Ramadan. Don't do anything or say anything. That displeases me. Keep your mouth shut. And control your eyesight. If you make a mistake a little bit, do a istighfar alongside in parallel. In parallel, that I've made the niyyah to Allah. I've intended, and my niyyah is solid. And you change yourself. Reform. 
improve physically top to bottom everything above should be in it by rasul physically externally should be imitation of the prophet sallallahu nothing should be visible that is not complying with ittiba just 30 days imitation your libas your dress your face your tariqa your lifestyle and they will say they're always a unique man when you sit amongst people yeah just 30 days do that sit with them Sit with those because whoever you sit with, Allah says, I will give them reward as well. Those people, those people who love Him, on top of that, I'll give them reward as well. Tell me now. Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul. Allah says in the Quran, Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul. Abey Allah na biz Rasul. Ata Allahina maladina. Amlahu Allah says that whoever my people who love Allah and His Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Whoever loves Allah and his Rasul, remember, Atiullah, Atiul Rasul, Allah says, both. Condition him. And Atat, obedience before, obedience is the love. Without love, you cannot obey. You cannot uh, comply. Remember this. Remember this. So the meaning of obedience is, it's inviting you first, it will be love. When you love, then you will obey. Without love, you cannot obey. Yes, those people who love Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam announces, "Ma'alladina, I guarantee that they will rise with them. They will rise with them." Then Allah gave a list with who upon those who I gave my gifts, Nabiyyin, wa Siddiqin, wa Shuhada, wa Salihin. You will rise with them. Allahu Akbar. So we can't even do this much. That Allah and His Rasul, if you love Allah and His Rasul, Allah Ta'ala says, nothing to worry about now. Nothing to worry about now. I give a guarantee that with the Nabis, with the Siddiqeen, with the Shuhada, with the Salihin. Tell me what a great path Allah has opened up, a great door. And how do we achieve this? As a Thawban radiyallahu anhu, imagine the style, look at the style of the Sahaba. He was a unique Sahaba. Every Sahabi, every companion was unique. Every, com- yes, so, mashallah, he went and sat in front of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hazrat Tawban. And he's crying. He's crying, Allah's Nabi says, what's the matter? What's happened? This is the meaning of the hadith I'm sharing with you, explaining to you. He said, oh, and look at his thinking. He, he, not about money, the ask, when ask the Holy Prophet, that maybe your business can flourish, you get a shop or have a house and wife, children, no. Look at their thinking. Or today go to pizza, pizza, but think that maybe was he was come to ask me for taweez, some dunya we think, etc. This is wrong, isn't it? This style is quite the style should be the, the, the style and the manner between the Holy Prophet and the Saba, the, the relationship between the Sheikh and the student should be the same. That's when he's a Sheikh or Peter, otherwise he's a thief. He's a thief, and the Marid is a thief that goes with different desires, worldly desires, and he goes to his teacher. Peer, Sheikh, and Murid student relationship is just like the Holy Prophetism and the Sahaba's relationship. Otherwise, he's not a Peer. He's not a Sheikh. Yes, they, they, they had the condition, the relationship of love. What's the condition? Muhabbat, love. All of the companions, they loved. Ya Hazrat Tawban, he's crying. And Allah's Nabi Sallallahu did say, Oh, shall I do dua for you? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Is there poverty? What is it? No, no. He said, what's the matter, Tawban? What's happened? And look at the answer. What's he asking, Tawban? He said, oh, Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa a unique thought is coming because beautiful waswasa even would come to them. Their thoughts were even positive. What's it you're thinking? What did you think? He said, oh, Prophet of Allah, I'm thinking here that look, I'm tired, I work, and from home, I come straight to, I come straight to your presence, your honorable company. Why? Because until I don't see your blessed face, I don't get satisfaction, happiness, peace. Subhanallah. He said, I can't eat, I don't like my food, I don't like going to the family, I don't get satisfaction, peace. But when I come, present myself and I see your blessed face, then, then I get the revival and a consciousness. Say, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So I'm telling you the relationship here. What's the relationship? This is what should be the love between the sheikh and the student, the murid. Then there's the success, achievement. This is the genuine methodology. That's why we go to the friends of Allah, the mashayikh, and that's why the mashayikh keep us in their company. Yes, there's no other objective. 
So Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what is it then? He said that I see your blessed face and I get peace and happiness. He said, fine, that's good. Further? He said, but I'm thinking beyond this. Look at their thinking where it's going, subhanAllah. He said, oh Prophet of Allah I'm going to die. Death is haq, it's the truth. And when I die after I pass away, then where will you be and where will I be? Subhanallah. Yes, the, what will I get in that paradise? In the paradise that I cannot even see you, what will I do there? What will I do there? You will be in a high class and I don't know where I will be. So what will I do about that? And he's crying. Hey, the Holy Prophet didn't even give the reply. Jibreel alayhi salam came. Whoever has this form of love with Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Subhanallah, glory be to Allah. Not drama, not fake. Whoever loves like this, that Atiullah, that that if he has love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what type of life is that? That his whole physicality and spirituality will be in the way, the form the, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his his walking, talking, business, everything will be in the way of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu That's called Atiul Rasul. This is our mother Badin. Tell me, I don't know which direction we're going in. This is called the way of Jannah. Jannah is for these people. And look at the road, what a great road. Nibbiyeen, Siddiqeen, Shodha wa Salihin. The high level darajat Allah has given and defined. Who is a Nabi? The Prophet who receives revelation. Who is a Siddiq? That who when the wahi came to the Prophet that with their heart and mind he accepts and without dalil proof he accepts that. That was Siddiq. That is Sadiq. And Shaheed is the Shaheed. The Shaheed is that person that the message that has come from the Nabi Sassam, that he does amal on that, whilst he's practicing that, he's not worried about his own self. And with the Salihin, Salihin are those people in Darajah in the fourth rank here, that their desires, their ego, they clean it and purify it with the batin, they clean the inner state with mujahidah effort, they control it. The Salihin. And that's why we go to the friends of Allah to attain that at least. So these four ranks of people, great personalities. Allah says, don't ask now what great colleagues you'll get in paradise. This verse came due to that. Subhanallah. So it's still life, my friends. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. Life is still here. We have time. Make your intention near that I want to become like this. And to become like this, what's the path Allah has given? What's the path Allah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is defined? Tahajjud? Umrah? Hajj? No. Was he defined? Muhabbat, love. Love. What do we need? Muhabbat. And where will you get Muhabbat love from? Look, you're seeing here that what we need to do and try to do is that we have such love with Allah and His Rasul some such love that we are immersed in the way of the Prophet in His way. Life is a waste otherwise. Otherwise life is a waste without this. This life whose passes that is within the Holy Prophet some obedience and imitation, that is the real life. Tell me. That's the real life. So we need love for this. What ibadah do we need? Muhabbat love. Muhabbat love. So this was the love of Hazrat Tawban. And he was desperate. That how will I see you? How will I meet you in the in paradise? In the hereafter? So for this love to seek it, Allah Ta'ala has said in the Quran, guided us, that this love, if you want to acquire it, then Allah's Nabi Sallallahu has explained to it to us, prescribed to us, and Allah has told us as well. Two things, Allah's Nabi that that Allah give us the love, it's a great dua. In the great dua, Allah, I need your love and nothing else. Atiullah. Allah, I need your love and atiul rasul. And how will I get your love, Allah? That Allah give me the love of that human being who already loves you. Who already loves you. Subhanallah. When I will have love with that person who already loves you, the pious person, then I will get the deeds in my life that are the deeds that will earn your love, Allah. So go and love somebody. Good. Tell me. Why? Because remember this. That these, this love is that. As a Thawban's love with the Holy Prophet Wasallam, it wasn't dunya mixed in that. No material things mixed in that. All of the love, the genuine love. Yes, but the love around us today is contaminated with dunya. Behind that is dunya. The biggest love is the love of the mother and the father. Isn't it? The mother. But even there's dunya in between that. 
Yes, even she was start throwing the slippers at you. You haven't earned, you haven't got any money. And there's quarrel and argument and dunya. And dunya comes in between. World comes in between. Wahid, one place you will get genuine love. That, 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 that will take you to Allah like the Quran has prescribed. One place you will get the love. What is that? You will be amazed. What is that love? That is the love of the Shaykh. The love of the Shaykh. Subhanallah. Why? Because the Quran has said. Ya ayyuladheena. Allah says, Ittakula wa koonu ma'as sadiqeen. Ya ayyuladheena amna tukullah. Koonu ma'as sadiqeen. That when you go on this path to the wali Allah, to the kamil shaykh, the complete shaykh, the total shaykh, and when you attain his love, the kamil shaykh, by seeing his face, blessed face, within you, your whole emotions and condition. With so much love there is within him, just like the Sahaba loved the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because there's no dunya in that. There's no dunya in that. There's no worldly contamination in that. The shaykh is not meeting you for the world, and nor are you meeting the shaykh for the dunya. So there's no world in between. You are just meeting each other for the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah. Is there anyone who has this love? Nowhere in the world. Just one love which Allah selected himself. That this love that will bring you to me and to my Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says, yes, and the reward I'll give you is, where will you get that love from? In the company of a wali Allah, a shaykh. So when you see the shaykh, when you see the guide, subhanallah, looking at the shaykh with love is something else. When you do didar and you look at the blessed face of your shaykh, then subhanallah, within you, you will be illuminated. Illuminated. You'll become fresh and revived. You have no need to do any other action. No need to do any other action. Seeing the murshid, then you've attained the taqwa, the hajj. Like the hajj. Those people know this who have gone up the levels and experienced this. But the problem is this day, the fake things everywhere now. You get fake butter, you get fake meal, you get fake. So fake peers, people have looked at fake peers and so many times they've run away. But this is the reality. But it says, you look, you find, I'll give you the genuine article. That he will prescribe to you the path to Al-Qiyamah. Because that's not going to stop until Qiyamah, is it? The genuine path. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, so this is all Quran is prescribing this to us. So the reward you will get, the reward you will get, the human being, through obedience you will get reward. And obedience means love. And love to attain love, Allah has opened the door, the go look for my wali who loves me already. There's that relationship, strong. Straightforward point, straightforward learning. Yes, I can't do this, I can't do that, my conditions are negative for this reason, because you are on the wrong track. Go and enter into such a door where there's love there. Love to, yeah, there's no sticks there, there's love there. Yes, and then you will be aligned properly. If you're not aligned, then tell me. You'll be, you'll pull yourself together. You'll come onto the right track. There was a pious elder, can't remember his name now right at the moment. And whoever used to go near to him, whoever used to pass near to him, a Sikh or Hindu, he'd recite the kalima. He'd recite the kalima. Somebody asked them, what's the point? What's the issue here? That he doesn't even speak to them. And they pass by him, they recite the kalima. The people who don't have iman. And he said, that just pass by me and experience it. And just in his face, there was so much honesty and nur and light. They said, if he's so beautiful, then how beautiful will Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu be? That there's nur and light and refresh." refreshing effect on their faces and they pull not towards themselves but towards Allah towards Allah they invite the attraction why what have they done already the wali Allah the same action they make you enable you to practice hey subhanallah subhanallah the action they've already done they they will already arrived to that station then they enable you and energize you to do the same thing they don't tell you something else there's no magic here there's no magic here the same action they will enable you and and make you feel like doing yourself. The action they've already done is the hadith they learned it from. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu advice is in hadith. They learned that from that. The action they've done is that whatever they're going to acquire and attain, everything is relying on the purification of the heart. 
the clean heart. So that wali Allah has already assigned and allocated, handed his heart over to Allah. Already assigned it. And he has submitted himself to a shaykh that, Oh, my teacher, my guide, please purify my heart, correct my heart, reform my heart. So when your heart starts to reform and develop, in the company of the shaykh, your heart starts to develop, the heart converts towards good. Not the body, it's not the body that converts. First, the heart changes, the heart changes. The love starts seeping into the heart, the love comes into the heart. When I went to my shaykh, when I went to my shaykh, then I didn't used to accept peace before that shaykh. I said, what's this peace and shaykh and guide? They all like this, I said. I, I generalized. But I had a desire that I wanted to get close to Allah, I wanted to be a friend of Allah. I used to do Umrah, I used to go left and right and here and there. But I didn't get what I wanted. I studied all the tafasir, commentaries of Quran. What's the point? There's, there's this anxiety inside me, a frustration, because that was the right path eventually to go into the Wali Allah. Eventually. So khair. Then I thought, okay, let's go and find and look. That, what, where can I find this? Satisfaction, peace. Most definitely. Subhanallah. So when Allah Ta'ala sent me there, because I was against the peace, or not uh, in agreement with this path of tasawwuf or peace and shaykhs, this wasn't my sort of uh, concept, mindset. So when I went to the company, there was a doctor, I was praying salah in Pakistan. And I went there fresh after doing it. And he took my hand. He took my hand. He said, when did you come? I said, just now. I just put my luggage down. He said, come with me. Let me show you something. He said. I said, brother, I've just arrived. What are you going to show me now? He said, no, no, quickly come with me. I said, what's happened to you? I said, what's this appearance you've got? You weren't like this before, I said to him. He said, leave that. Just come with me. Come with me. I didn't say anything. I went with him. And as I went, just as I went, there was a room, a hujra. And when I saw inside, then subhanallah, soon the first sight on Hazrat Sahib I saw, I sat down immediately. I sat down immediately, right there and then I just sat down. And he said, this is the wali Allah. And I forgot that I've just come, I haven't even opened my luggage yet, food is cooked, ready, my father's waiting for me in family. I said, this is what I've been looking for, the nur, the light. Subhanallah, I'm telling you my story and how I changed. Hazrat Sahib saw me, just generally, and he didn't say anything, Hazrat Sahib, my shaykh, simply his affectionate vision, he looked at me, affection and love, after that finished, I said salam, and the desperateness came into the heart. Every moment I'm thinking, that looking, looking, salah started, from where to where I went, from where to where, so my brothers, there are people like this that if you sit with them, you don't leave empty handed from the company, but have the niya for islah, betterment, improvement. That I want my islah reform. If you just say, I'm fine, there's nothing lacking me, I'm pious, I'm on the path. No, until you don't see your defects, then you're, and accept that I'm nothing, until then you cannot do your islah, you cannot improve yourself. So, my brothers, Ramadan is coming. Ramadan is coming. So, this is the first point. That this, don't waste this Ramadan. Don't waste this Ramadan. And when will it be wasted? When will Ramadan be wasted? If we commit the sins during Ramadan, and if we against the Sharia spend our life, these 30 days, give them over to Allah. Hand over, make intention right now. One week's left from today. I make the niya that these 30 days I'm not going to cut my beard. I'm going to improve my appearance. And just like the Holy Prophet says, I'm uh, prescribed, I'm going to live my life 30 days. Let's see what loss I incur. 30 days. Yes, no other requirement. That's it, no other promise. And sit in good company and start doing dhikrullah. That's it. Just do these two actions. Totally with salamat, peace, inshallah, Ramadan, you will attain the good Ramadan. And the rest of your year will be good and pious. So inshallah, if Allah wills, this will happen for sure. May Allah, Allah will not allow us to waste our Ramadan. After that, then do amal, then do actions on top of that. But try to spend Ramadan of goodness and I will define that for you. Salamati is not taraweeh, not recitation, not sujood. These are extra bonus on top of the, the prime things. That from top to bottom, day long, we have to see, am I sinning at all? Am I committing? Am I lying during the day? Am I backbiting? If by mistake you do that, immediately tawbah, repent. Immediately. 
I don't want to waste my Ramadan, spoil my Ramadan. Don't do anything wrong, no haram, how dare you eat anything? Don't go near to it. Yes, that today for Ramadan I waste and spoil. Then remember, then I cannot hope for maybe the next Ramadan, there's no guarantee. Such a big thing, don't waste it my friends. Yes, just make a pattern of life. Then morning I'll get up, I'll recite the Quran, I'll pray Salah. And the biggest caution in Ibadah, what we need to do, remember this. The biggest caution in according uh, with relation to Ibadah, there are two things. One is Ibadah, that you make the goodness of the Ibadah during Ramadan, what we need to be careful of. One, one just one thing I'll tell you. And one is the sin that we shouldn't do. These two things we need to grab and run along with. The first thing is what? The first point is what? Salah. Salah. We need to, during Ramadan, doesn't matter what happens, pray in Jama'in congregation. Write this in your diary. So if you want to make Iman of Salamat, of Ramadan of Salamat, doesn't matter what occurs, Salah that I'm going to pray has to be in Jama'in congregation. These 30 days. This thing makes solid, solid. And the second thing, I'm not going to commit the sins. And the third thing, that some pious company, good company, sit in that company. These three things you need to do. Grab them, okay? Salah. If you are close, then make them near for this masjid. I'm going to pray salah in this masjid. End of story. Number two. Alongside prayer, salah. You need company, good company. Make a pattern. I'm going to pray salah five times a day. And after that I need good company, some pious company with his dhikr. In this masjid there's dhikr as well, morning and evening in this masjid. So Ramadan dhikr is massive, great action. So great that what a great companion, what guarantee is he given? Has Umar radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased him, there's a hadith. The weather in Ramadan does dhikr, is forgiven, beyond forgiven. There's a majlis here of dhikr, morning and evening. So come and join that gathering. Two things, alhamdulillah. And the third thing, sins. Don't commit the sins. No sin that is against sharia in these 30 days. Afterwards we'll see what happens. These three actions we must do. Will we do these brothers? Okay, good. Now we'll do to uh, revive and refresh. Let's do dhikrullah, remembrance of Allah. So what do we do? The, the dhikr we do now, the, you keep this dhikr running during the whole of Ramadan. The majlis online, it will come. You'll get online dhikr morning, evening. If you're in the car, you're working. For example, keep your work existent. Businesses, work, occupation. Look for a masjid though. Look for a masjid that during work, is there a masjid nearby? I pray salah there. In the evening, this masjid is close to me. I pray salah here in the evening. Fajr time, I pray salah here. From now, make the schedule, the program. Now. It's tartib, isn't it? The way to do it. That the masjid's here, I work here, I drive a taxi, I work in the shop, and this masjid's close to me. When I'm here, this masjid's close, I'll go and pray this time. And this masjid was, I want the Ramadan of Salamat. This could be my last Ramadan. Oh, this is my last Ramadan. Maybe Allah won't give me a chance after this. Man, any sickness can come, corona, whatever could come. So, no question should arise that the five times salah that the human being prays at home. No, no, this is not salah. Brothers, do we promise? So write this in your diary that what masjid is there, what work do I do? I'm going to pray salah in this masjid, wherever it is near to me, okay? And then majlis of dhikr. In this masjid we have dhikr morning and evening. Come and present yourself in the dhikr. Pray taraweeh and do dhikr as well for shuwa. If you can't come, online dhikr takes place. Our dhikr online. Just tuck, press the button and join online. Join online. And you will acquire the dhikr, alhamdulillah. After that, then the other amal, according to the tawfiq, the amount you can read Quran, the amount of tasbih you can do, and special talawat, stay in touch with Quran. Even if it's one page of the Quran you read, but definitely read it. Even if it's one page, just connect yourself to the Quran. Allah knows that He's only got this much time. He can do 10 complete Qurans, He can do 15, but He just grabbed the Quran. Just grab the Quran. That this Quran is mine, it will run along with me during Ramadan. Pray, read two pages, read four pages, read three pages, just read one line, but definitely read that one line. Don't let the day go without reading. That's it. Make a tartib, write it down, make a program, a schedule, so that our Ramadan doesn't go to waste. And we can. Pass through smoothly is very valuable month.
Alhamdulillah. Just if you think you keep working, eat, drink, whatever you're doing, everything, Alhamdulillah. Yes, normal. But with this caution, spend Ramadan, the whole year will run in a nice and good way. Salamat. May Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq. Ameen. Come, let's do dhikr for a short while. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Salamu wa salamu wa ala Sayyidin wa salim. Shameen wa zalmeen. Ta'awu ya Sayyidin wa Habibun Ameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa ulana Muhammadin. Nabi al-Ummi wa al-Wajayi umma al-Mu'mineen wa zuriyyati wa al-Bati kama sallayta ala al-Ibrahima inna al-Amirun al-Jirin wa sallim tasliman daiman abadan qatidan qatidan qasirah اللهم في لنا ذنوبنا وظلمنا وحزننا وجدنا وخطنا وامدنا كل ذلك عندنا اللهم ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب الحشر وقنا عذاب الميزان وادخلنا الجنه تما غبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين يا رب العالمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم صمتنا على الإيمان وامتنا على الإيمان وشرنا يوم القيامة مع الإيمان اللهم إنا على ذكرك والشكر وحسن عبادتك يا قاضي الحاجات اكتحاجاتنا يا دافي بليات اتفع بلياتنا يا شافي الأمراض اشفع مرادنا اللهم عوفنا في بدني اللهم عوفنا في سمي اللهم عوفنا في بسري ربنا حبلنا من أسواجنا وزرياتنا قرة عين وجعنا للمتقين إماما اللهم لم برهم هو كما رب يعني صغيرا يا الله ہمارے ماں باپ کو بخش دے یا اللہ ہمارے ماں باپ کو بخش دے یا اللہ ہمارے ماں باپ کو بخش دے اللہ ملم برہم ہوا کما تم بیانی سغیرا اللہ مغفر لنا ول والدینا و استادینا و مشایخنا و جمیع المومنین والمومنات والمسلمین والمسلمات اللہ یاہو منہم والنمبات برحمتی گجاو رحم الرائمین سبحان رمی کرم اللہتی اما یسفون والسلام للمرسلی والحمدللہ رمی العالمین آمین